What I'm going to talk to you about today is my, um, I'm a neonatologist at Johns Hopkins and my area of research that I'm going to be talking to you today is actually the treatment of coming off of meds um, for the infant who is exposed either in utero to opiates or in infants who, because of math, you know, significant critical illness, is exposed to opiates and also many times benzodiazepines. <coughs> So the majority of my talk is really going to be focused on my uh, work that has been published, looking at my work and my co-investigators, looking at the role of an alternative uh, treatment, uh, particularly the use of clonidine, uh, which is an alpha-2 adrenergic agonist, and I'll tell you how that works for, um, for as using it as adjunct therapy to actually wean a child, or even adult, but I'm not going to talk about adults, off of um, opiates. So, <clears throat> I guess we can go like this. So hopefully I can, t will share with you, and at the end of this short session, you'll have an understanding of the cellular mechanisms mediating opiate withdrawal in newborns. Um, I'm particularly going to identify an alternative detoxification uh, treatment paradigm for the treatment of what we call neonatal abstinence syndrome, and I'll explain that and consider the alternative use of alpha-2 adrenergic receptor agonists, particularly focusing on clonidine, although you will hear about dexamethinidine, uh, which is a more sexy um, alpha-2 adrenergic uh, receptor agonist for the treatment of pain and sedation in newborns. So, um, first of all, let me tell you what, where the problem comes from. Well, the problem comes from um, actually in utero exposure in which the uh, infant during development uh, can be exposed to heroin, methadone, oxycodone, or buprenorphine. Um, buprenorphine is the newer opiate on the block um, and it is actually used, uh, actually is becoming much more common in treating um, mothers um, who are pregnant as well as in adults who are on drugs uh, as a opiate replacement therapy. So you know about methadone, now buprenorphine, they call it methadone maintenance treatment or buprenorphine maintenance treatment, M MMT or BMT. And then you have the iatrogenic exposure for the treatment of pain and um, to achieve um, pain relief and sedation uh, in babies who are very sick with cardiorespiratory failure on the basis of infection, cardiac disease, lung disease. Um, and as a neonatologist, uh, we use a lot of these meds, fentanyl, morphine, and hydromorphone are the most common. The presentation of um, babies who are no longer exposed to the drugs, who begin to have activation of their autonomic nervous system and symptoms of withdrawal, usually occurs about 24 to 72 hours after birth in the infant who's in utero exposed. But it can start at any time um, when babies are exposed to continuous infusions of opiates and when the opiate is starting to be weaned, and we'll talk about exactly how long do you have to be exposed until before you develop tolerance. The incidence of uh, what we call withdrawal syndrome from opiates, and I'll give you the reason why this happens, um, is for as methadone, 50 to 90 percent of the infants who are exposed uh, will develop some type of withdrawal syndrome that um, about half of which will require uh, opioid or, let's say, pharmacological therapy. Oxycodone is, again, used by, unfortunately, mothers uh, who are pregnant, and it's becoming sort of prescription drug use. And the incidence, as we know now, in one study done out of Mayo, who followed babies all the way, not necessarily babies, but the problem with um, prescription drug use over time, is the incidence about 5.6%. And buprenorphine, if mothers are treated with buprenorphine during pregnancy, the incidence of, um, depending on who you read, when she was started on buprenorphine, the incidence of neonatal abstinence syndrome or withdrawal is about 20 to 70 percent. And the iatrogenic exposure, um, the duration of exposure means a lot. In fact, you can only be fentanyl, usually is the one that has the most problems in developing dependence morphine and then hydromorphone is probably, morphine and hydromorphone may be about equivalent, but I think uh, uh, Sabine will talk more about that. And if the baby is on this about 24 hours to seven days, the possibility of that baby having dependence is close to 100%. So trying to get babies 
off drugs and home is really the purpose of, of what we try to do. So the clinical signs of opiate withdrawal in an infant um, is a wakefulness, very the inability to sleep well. They are extremely irritable. They have a very high-pitched cry. They have tremor, tremors, temperature instability, usually hyperthermia or fever. They breathe fast. They um, are very agitated. They are difficulty with feeding and the fact that they try to nurse or they'll try to take a bottle and they're unable to coordinate their suck and swallow so they can get dehydrated. They're really quite very anxious and hyper and very irritable. They are, move around a lot so that they have excoriations on their arms and their legs. They can have difficulty with breathing, either tachypnea or apnea. Tachypnea means increased respiratory rate, apnea or pauses in the breathing. And this can lead to, uh, because of the increased metabolic rate, they can either have acidosis or because of the abnormalities in breathing, they can have respiratory alkalosis. They lose weight because they don't feed well um, and sometimes have increase in um, diarrhea and vomiting. And they have lots of other autonomic dysfunction with a creed and increase in um, lacrimation. So as you can see, this is not a state which you would, would want to actually have bonding with. The baby actually is quite irritable and quite disturbing to any caregiver that would like to be able to take care of the baby. So um, what, what about the incidence of this? Well, we have three pieces of data which I'll share with you. The incidence of babies born in utero to drug exposure um, from data from NIDA, 5.5% 5, 5, 5 of pregnant females have had some use of illicit drug use during pregnancy. Um, the American Academy of the uh, AAP Committee on Drugs, uh, the, the data are as you see. And as you see, the Lester Maternal Lifestyle Study shows that 10% of live births exposed to opiates and or cocaine, and 5% of these will end up with a perinatal mortality. In the Baltimore City, um, opiates is a very common um, problem with uh, mothers who are um, pregnant or in any of our dr illicit drug use. Opiates is the most common, um, and that's much higher than it is in the rest of the state of Maryland. You can see the other drugs as you have, we've listed here. If you look at prescription drug use uh, of mothers, um, this is a data that was done at Mayo Clinic that I referred to a little bit earlier, in which they were able to follow the incidence of narcotic use per 1,000 1, deliveries from 1997 to 2009, as well as the incidence of babies with, born with neonatal abstinence syndrome that actually needed therapy. So you can see that non-prescription drug use is really becoming a problem. So it isn't always the, the, the stereotypic person who in fact is on the streets, homeless, having other complications of, of their life that makes them use drugs. But in fact, what you have are more sophisticated individuals or people who are taking medication for chronic pain uh, that end up having opiate dependency and it's very difficult for them to get off meds and therefore the baby is exposed. So in those uh, group of oral drugs or oral opiates, here's the list uh, that you can see. Um, oxycodone is pretty common, um, and uh, the Percocet, you know, that we heard about a little bit earlier. All of these are drugs in which mothers are usually exposed to of the prescription uh, drug use. So I'm going to tell you a couple things that I think are important for your uh, basic understanding, and perhaps many of you already understand this. But there's a few, few definitions that I think we should all be on the same page with. Now, when you hear about drug addiction, and this is the same thing if babies are in the hospital or adults are in the hospital exposed to opiates, these things happen, tolerance happens, and that's the loss of effect following repeated treatment such that a higher dose is required for equivalent effect. So, for example, if a child is on uh, a particular one milligram per kilo per hour of a continuous effusion for, let's say, a couple days, and that baby is still having problems, you will note that the same amount of opiate is no longer um, sufficient to uh, take care of that baby's pain. So what you often find yourself is escalating the opiate dose, and this is not uncommon um, in adults uh, as well as children. 